ಓಂ ಭದ್ರಂ ಕರ್ಣೇ ಶೃಣುಯಾಮ ದೇವಾ ಓಂ ಭದ್ರಂ ಕರ್ಣೇ ಶೃಣುಯಾಮ ದೇವಾ ಭದ್ರಂ ಪಶ್ಯೇ ಮಾಕ್ಷಭಿರ್ಯಜತ್ರ ಭದ್ರಂ ಪಶ್ಯೇ ಮಾಕ್ಷಭಿರ್ಯಜತ್ರ ಸ್ಥಿರೈರಂಗೈ ಸ್ತುಷ್ಟು ವಾಗು ಸಸ್ತನೂಭಿ ಸ್ಥಿರೈರಂಗೈ ಸ್ತುಷ್ಟು ವಾಗು ಸಸ್ತನೂಭಿ ವ್ಯಸೇಮ ದೇವಾಯು ವ್ಯಸೇಮ ದೇವಹಿತ ಯದಾಯು ಸ್ವಸ್ತಿನಂದ್ರೋ ವೃದ್ಧ ಸ್ವಸ್ತಿ ಪೂಷಾ ವಿಶ್ವೇದ ಸ್ವಸ್ತಿ ನಸ್ತಾರ್ಚ್ಯೋ ಅರಿಷ್ಟ ನೇಮಿ ಸ್ವಸ್ತಿ ನೋ ಬೃಹಸ್ಪತಿ ದಾತು Okay, I think I got disconnected, correct? Mm-hmm. Some, uh, because I tried to load those files, WebEx gave an error and it, it shut me out. Anyway, I have come back. You are able to hear me clearly, correct? Yeah, we can hear you, but there is a big circle going on in the picture. Oh, picture part I will take care of. Yeah, that, that's okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, is my picture appearing now? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yes. Okay, good enough. So, recording is still going on. So, let it go on. I will edit it later. Okay. <coughs> we will continue now. Om Bhadran Karne Vishrinu Yama Devaha Bhadran Karne Vishrinu Yama Devaha Bhadran Pashye Maksha Bhirya Jatraha ಭದ್ರಂ ಪಶ್ಯೇ ಮಾಕ್ಷಭಿರ್ಯಜತ್ರ ಸ್ಥಿರೈರಂಗೈ ಸ್ತುಷ್ಟು ವಾಗು ಸಸ್ತನೂಭಿ ಸ್ಥಿರೈರಂಗೈ ಸುಷ್ಟು ವಾಗು ಸಸ್ತನೂಭಿ ವ್ಯಸೇಮ ದೇವಹಿತ ಯದಾಯು ವ್ಯಸೇಮ ದೇವಹಿತ ಯದಾಯು ಸ್ವಸ್ತಿ ನ ಇಂದ್ರೋ ವೃದ್ಧ ಶ್ರವಾ ಸ್ವಸ್ತಿ ನ ಇಂದ್ರೋ ವೃದ್ಧ ಶ್ರವಾ ಸ್ವಸ್ತಿ ನೂಷಾ ವಿಶ್ವೇದ ಸ್ವಸ್ತಿ ನೂಷಾ ವಿಶ್ವೇದ ಸ್ವಸ್ತಿ ನಸ್ತಾರ್ಕ್ಷ್ಯೋ ಅರಿಷ್ಟ ನೇಮಿ ಸ್ವಸ್ತಿ ನಸ್ತಾರ್ಕ್ಷ್ಯೋ ಅರಿಷ್ಟ ನೇಮಿ ಸ್ವಸ್ತಿ ನೋ ಬೃಹಸ್ಪತಿ ದಾತು ಸ್ವಸ್ತಿ ನೋ ಬೃಹಸ್ಪತಿ ದಾತು ಓಂ ಶಾಂತಿ 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 ಓಂ ಶಾಂತಿ 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 ಪ್ರಣವೋ ಧನು ಪ್ರಣವೋ ಧನು ಶರೋಹ್ಯಾತ್ಮ ಶರೋಹ್ಯಾತ್ಮ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮ ತಲ್ಲಕ್ಷ್ಯ ಮುಚ್ಯತೆ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮ ತಲ್ಲಕ್ಷ್ಯ ಮುಚ್ಯತೆ ಅಪ್ರಮತ್ತೇನ ವೇದ್ಯ ಅಪ್ರಮತ್ತೇನ ವೇದ್ಯ ಶರವತ್ ತನ್ಮಯೋ ಭವೇತ್ ಶರವತ್ ತನ್ಮಯೋ ಭವೇತ್ ಸೊ ವಿ ವೇರ್ ಲುಕಿಂಗ್ ಅಟ್ ದಿ ಥರ್ಡ್ ವರ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ಸೆಕೆಂಡ್ ಖಂಡ ಆಫ್ ಸೆಕೆಂಡ್ ಮುಂಡಕ ಲಾಸ್ಟ್ ವೀಕ್ ವೇರ್ ಆಲ್ರೆಡಿ ದಿ ಓಂಕಾರ ಉಪಾಸನ ವಾಸ್ ಇಂಟ್ರೊಡ್ಯೂಸ್ಡ್ ಓಕೆ ಸೊ ದಟ್ ಸೇಮ್ ಥಿಂಗ್ ಇಸ್ ನಾಟ್ ಬೀಯಿಂಗ್ continue so the upanishad is again talking about the same uh, imagery with om okay and here what does it say pranavo dhanu so this pranava or omkara is the bow is it that is the dhanu or that is the uh, like an instrument for us correct that is a upaya danu who is only a upaya correct it is a means for something to hit a target let us say then what is it that is going to hit the target so if bow is the upaya if it is the means then the arrow has to be 
the one which hits the target. And here, what is that arrow? Sarohi Atma. So Atma is the arrow. Self is the arrow, you can take one meaning. Or generally, Atma has many meanings depending on the context. The Atma Shabda can even be used for the physical body. Atma can be used for mind or Anthakarana. Atma can be used even for Paramatma and also the individual, individual self. So here, Atma, we have to take it as the mind. Mind which is, again, which is uh, qualified by certain right attitudes and values and which is pure. That means which is not afflicted by Raga and Dvesha. A mind which is which has all these characteristics, correct? It is characterized by having certain calmness, ability to focus, not distracted by likes and dislikes. Okay, so that is the kind of mind which we are talking about here. And that mind is the arrow. Okay. And what is the target? Okay, the target here is Brahma Tal Lakshya Muchyate. So the target is Brahman. Okay. And what is this uh, word Lakshyam also has a very interesting meaning. Okay. When we talk about Lakshyam, means something which is implied also we can say. Okay, traditionally, when we talk about words and their meaning, okay, normally if I say pot, means you understand what is pot, correct? The pot word is there, and then the meaning of that word pot is the actual object pot, and you understand what it is. So that is called vachyartha. Vachyartha means what? The immediate meaning of a word. On uttering a word, whatever you understand and whatever object you understand the meaning as, that is the Vachyartha. Now, Brahman cannot be the Vachyartha of any one particular word. Okay? Why? Because Brahman is Ananta. If it becomes the Vachyartha, or the direct meaning of any one particular word, then it will become limited, correct? If Brahma is part, then it is not something else, it will become like that. So, like part, Brahman also, let us say, is an object, and it is the direct meaning of a particular word, means then it is, the, it is only the direct meaning of that word. Then all other things are not Brahman then it will become limited. But it cannot be like that, correct? Because Brahman is everything. Brahman is the cause of everything. It is Satyam Jnanam Anantam Brahma. So then how do we then teach about this Brahman? So we cannot teach Brahman by saying that it is the Vachyartha of any particular word. That is not possible. But still we have to teach only through words, correct? Shabdam only is Pramana for us. Shabda Pramana. Shruti has to teach us what is this Brahman. So, Shruti teaches us by implication. Understand that. Lakshana Vritti we say. Okay. So, Lakshana Vritti is used to teach what this Brahman is. So, when Shruti says Satyam, okay, Normally, what Satya means existent or existence. And our understanding of existence is what something, any object is existent, correct? You are able to see an object, then you can say it is existing. We even use existence as an adjective. We say existent part, non-existent part, correct? So, we put existence as though it is an object, adjective and use it. But really, when Shruti is revealing Brahman as Satyam to you, 
it is not revealing an existence which is which is qualified by space and time understand that normally when we understand existence we understand it only within the confines of space and time but in reality brahman itself is the cause of space time correct tasmad etasmad atmanah aakasha sambhutah so aakasha itself came from this brahman along with that time also has come that is said even in the bhashya so our tradition very clear space time is created and brahman is the cause for even space time so when shruti is talking about brahman as existence that existence is not conditioned by space time it is not an adjectival use like we say pot is satyam then clay is satyam we can say from a different standpoint then we can say molecules are satyam atoms are satyam subatomic particles are satyam but all these things are within space time but brahman when we talk about brahman it is existence as a noun with, without any qualification and in fact brahman's existence alone is available as the existence of all the things so we have to actually if we have to be correct and reflect the upanishad teaching correctly we have to say party existence clay existence molecular existence atomic existence like that correct so existence is the real it's the reality the name and form is only a name and form correct it really doesn't really count it's only mithya name and form is there along with existence but existence alone is satyam sadeva satyam that's why beautifully the upanishad says sadvastu alone is satyam when it talks about like that sadeva satyam means there satyam is used as an ontological term ontological term means what explaining the reality of brahma vastu and brahman alone is satyam the jagat karya jagat is nothing but mithya so like that we have to understand the meaning implied meaning of the word satyam the it is not brahman is not even the vachyartha of satyam because normally the vachyartha of satyam means it is existence in space time that is our understanding but here it is lakshanartha lakshana vritti we have to use even there traditionally we have some technical terms are all there we call it bhagatyaga lakshanam okay so bhagatyaga lakshanam means what we retain one portion of the meaning existence means existence but we leave out another portion what existence in space time that part we have to leave out and understand existence as it is it is existence and its existence alone is available as existence of all the mithya vastu known and unknown in this jagat is it clear including your body mind and sense complex okay don't leave that out that is always a problem so like this we have to understand this clearly okay so brahman is the lakshya means what it is only to be known by implication it cannot be known directly as the meaning of any one particular word okay the kano upanishad says that very beautifully correct hmm it says yan manasa na manute yena hur mano matam so that which cannot be known as an object of your mind and that which makes your mind itself function as your mind correct also it says those who say i know brahman they don't know <laughs> okay yasya matam tasya matam yasya matam na vedasah analysis so if somebody says i know brahman then he has to say i don't know really in fact because you cannot know it as an object 
But if the guy who says that I know Brahman as an object means then he doesn't really know what he is talking about. Brahman cannot be known as an object of your mind or senses. Brahman is yourself. That's why it is yourself. Self alone is there, correct? If you have, if you have negated all the objects of your senses and mind, what remains is nothing but yourself. That is Brahman. In fact, that's what the next verse here also will talk about that. So anyway, here what I am trying to tell you is the word Lakshya can be simply targeted as, uh, sorry, translated as target. But more interestingly, it is also saying that Brahman can only be known as a Lakshya. It cannot be known as a Vatsya. Correct? So, Lakshana Vritti has to be used and that's how it is revealed. So, there is no Vak... Uh, typically, we say about Vachaka Vachya Sambandha when we talk about a word and its meaning. In the case of Brahman, you cannot have a Vachaka Vachya Sambandha. It's only a Lakshana and Lakshya Sambandha is there. Correct? So, Lakshana Lakshya Bhava Sambandha is there means by implier and implied relationship, you have to say in English. Okay. So, that is what you have to understand. So, why we are saying that here, like Satyam Jnana Manantam, even Om is a word which implies Brahman. By implication, it reveals Brahman. The Vachyartha of Om is, Ish om is Ishwara. Because if you if you actually do the etymology and all that, you can get a meaning of Ava Rakshane. Using that Ava Dhatu, you can derive Om. And Om denotes Om, the meaning of Om is Ishwara. But by implication, it is nothing but Brahman. The Lakshana Atva is Brahman or Om also. So that is why even when we do this Upasana, correct? So really I should not say Upasana here, when we do this Dhyana, okay. So here the Dhyana is not done for some special Punya, it is purely to get established in this Jnana. Okay, that's what the Upanishad will actually say now. See, if you see it says, Brahma Tal Laksha Muchyate, then Apramattena Vedhavyam. So, Pramatta means what? So, the word Pramada only becomes, with the Ikta Pratyaya, it becomes Pramatta. So, Pramada, in fact, in Tamil we use the word Pramadam in a wrong meaning. If we, if we want to praise something or if we are pleased with something, we say Pramadam, Pramadam. <laughs> that is wrong, wrong actually because that is pra actual Sanskrit this word is Pramodam, but in colloquial Tamil it became Pramadam. But really Pramada means alasya or some kind of a laziness or a stupor or indifference. That is the actual meaning of Pramada. So, when you are in this, when you are a Bhumukshu, you have to be alert all the time. Okay, you cannot be lackadaisical as or you cannot be indifferent to the pursuit. So you have to be alert. That is what is here. Apramattena means what? Without being indifferent, being alert. Also being focused, you can say. Because when we talk about target, there is the famous story of Arjuna, correct? So Dronacharya asks the different Pandavas. So he gives them a bow and an arrow and then there is a bird sitting on top of the tree. Then he asks one of them, what do you see? Now you actually try to focus to shoot the arrow and what do you see? He asks. So one person says, I see the, I see the tree and in the tree I see that bird. Then he said, okay. Then the next guy, the next guy says, I see a branch and in that I see the bird, not good enough. Another person says, I see the bird. 
that also not good enough then arjuna comes he says i see the eye of the bird so that is the kind of focus on the target so that is apramatta that means you are totally focused on that alert not giving up or taking it easy okay this pursuit the sadhana which we do all that we have to keep doing till it becomes sahaja till it becomes natural because the hold of the individuality is so much that it's not going to be easy to look at your individuality as mithya finally it comes to that understand that let me tell you all even scientists and all they easily understand the world as mithya every quantum scientist knows that there is 99% space only is there what we call solid liquid gas and all nothing the there is only really space so they all understand what is mithya so everything is subatomic particle a few particle means how do, how did this variegated world come up that itself is maya correct that is the maya that is wonder in fact that is ishwara's maya ishwara's magic show okay so that being the case so what do we then where is the problem the problem is in this world you have to include your body mind sense complex which is the basis of your individuality and that also is equally mithya and understanding that is the important thing when you learn this vedanta to be able to see one's own individuality as mithya and hold on to the self without any without making this mistake of placing one's eye on the physical body or on your mind shankara says this in fact in the commentary explicitly okay so it's a very important thing that apramatha means you have to be alert because there is a anadi kala pravritti we have to say correct it's a very strong habit is there habitual tendency is pretty strong and when one has to overcome that because all dukkha is because we think we are an individual understand that in reality we are not the individual self is self that's all it is the cause of everything and i am the self of everything in this creation my existence alone is the existence of everything my consciousness alone is manifest as awareness in each and every being that is the vision we are talking about that is what has to be assimilated and om the vehicle for that okay is the instrument so om is the bow and the, when you keep chanting this om and the mind then understands the implied meaning of om correctly then it hits the target correct so hitting the target means here what apramattena vedhavyam so it has to be understood without any indifference so you keep chanting om and then understand the implied meaning of om which is nothing but brahman om also reveals brahman alone and that brahman is not separate from oneself so that is what has to be understood here and that's what is said here sharavat tanmayo bhavet so once the arrow goes and hits the target what happens it becomes part of the target correct it enters the target and it becomes one with the target similarly once this mind which is characterized by all this uh, qualities correct and which is exposed to the teaching and which now understands the implied meaning of om by doing this om meditation will give up the notion of i in all these things in physical body in your subtle body 
then what happens one becomes one with this brahman only this becoming one and all is only figurative correct really you are already brahman it's only a recognition of that it's only an appreciation of a fact which is already established so we get established in a fact which is already established <laughs> that is what we say brahman is ta being established in this knowledge and that knowledge is we cannot even say second nature correct there is nothing second it is your only nature it is your nature it becomes natural so not placing the i in the physical and in the subtle bodies but still doing vyavahara as a leela we have to say correct otherwise guru shishya vyavahara and all will not be there jeevan mukti you cannot have so being a brahmanistha one can enjoy because whatever ishara has started there it has to end correct it's not a problem having a mind is not a problem mind thinking is not a problem having an individual upadhi is not an issue all these things can be enjoyed out of your own fullness that is the vision okay so that is what so saravat tanmayo bhave so like even an arrow becomes part and parcel of the target once it hits it here the individual is one with the total and there is only one and that is the thing then we will continue very interesting again upanishad is talking about the swarupa of brahman because it says brahma tal lakshya mutyate correct so what is this brahman so that we will see now yasmin dyauhu yasmin dyauhu yasmin dyauhu पृथ्वी च अंतरिक्षम पृथ्वी च अंतरिक्षम ओतम मनसः प्राणैश्च सर्वैः ओतम मनः सह प्राणैश्च सर्वैः तमेव एकं जानथ तमेव एकं जानथ आत्मानम अन्या वाचो आत्मानम अन्या वाचो विमुंचत अमृतस्य येश सेतु हु विमुंचत अमृतस्य येश सेतु हु सो दैट इज द वर्स नाउ अगेन उपनिषद आउट ऑफ इट्स ओन करुणा इट इज अगेन एक्सप्लेनिंग टू यू द ब्रह्म स्वरूप एंड द वर्ड ओतम ओतम प्रोतम इज यूज्ड अगेन वार्प एंड ऊफ इन इंग्लिश करेक्ट इफ यू नो हाउ दे how they uh, create manufacture cloth correct so you have different types of yarns are there so there is a long yarn then there is the other yarn is there so two directions the yarns are going and brahman is the otam and protam also of what so here see how beautifully the upanishad says dyauhu dyauhu means heaven prithivi earth the antariksham cha the all the space in between okay everything else the heavens the earth and everything else in between okay not only that okay that is you can say physical world and all that what about my mind manas cha okay mind also and mind along with the prana okay so sarvaihi pranaihi sah so prana prana here can be taken up as pancha prana or it can also be taken of all organs of action like that so mind and then all other organs okay including the karmendriya and jnanendriya all these things are what otam yasmin otam yasmin otam means what where they are woven so all these things are woven into this brahman 
and tameyaga ekam janatha atmanam so they are all oven in this brahman only like we say it is a cloth correct in reality what is that only yarn is there cloth is nothing but name and form again it is mithya the color of the cloth is the color of the yarn if you touch the cloth you are actually touching the yarn the very existence of cloth is the existence of the yarn so where is the cloth then <laughs> cloth is only a name and a form that's it nothing else it may even have a function also de- depending on how you are draping it and all that but what is there really is nothing but whatever you have woven there the yarn like that brahman is the yarn for this entire creation again that alone is satyam that is the cause of everything this whole creation including heaven earth all the things in between mind all the indriyas everything is all of them are woven on this brahman brahman alone is the reality they are all just appearances mithya and that brahman may you know janatha okay tam tam ekam also so ekam eva okay tam tameva ekam tam ekam eva ekam eva advitiyam like that another upanishad says here also ekam eva tam ekam eva that alone is there okay and what is that atmanam it is your very own self correct it is your self alone and that alone is there and in the, in your self only this entire creation is woven so you are the warp and woof of this entire creation including the heavens all the known and unknown things everything together and what else and then anya vachaha vimunchatha so again this is being taught by which shastra the this is being taught by upanishads correct the vedanta shastra is the one which is teaching you which is the pramana for this knowledge and all other things you give up all other shastras are all by implication or by direct teaching they are all only teaching dvaita okay so that's why anyaha vachaha all the shastras other than vedanta vimunchatha give up including the puro bhaga of the veda which is talking about sadhana sadhya okay in the form of different things different sadhyas are there including heaven and putra and vitta wealth everything okay so all those things you give up all the other shastras you give up means what you also have to give up whatever those shastras are showing you as something to be achieved correct all the sadhanas and sadhyas which are being revealed by these other shastras have to be given up because they are not going to give you moksha in reality you will still be the same individual trying to achieve something and become big even if you become brahma ji then there is a vishnu is sitting on top of you so what are you going to do and you will also have brahma ji also has day and night and all that and brahma ji also has a certain so many 100 years means what is brahma's years and all if we calculate this huge number comes but even then after that brahma ji also goes into laya and again has to come then in another creation some other person may become brahma ji so like that that is also not something any any post within this entire creation is still limited and any sadhana and sadhya revealed by any other shastra 
all that you have to give up that is the vairagya that is the vivek also correct that is a certain discrimination you have certain clarity you have with respect to what you want if you have that clarity then this vairagya and all is not a very difficult thing understand that see sometimes people associate this vairagya with some kind of like you are you are gritting your teeth and not going after something and all that of course some habitual tendencies are there we one has to overcome sometimes for that we we have certain disciplines are all there different types of disciplines are there including fasting a disciplined life one leads to know that one can be happy even without having the regular things which we think makes us really happy understand that so it will also help you to gain certain vairagya a disciplined life will help you to gain vairagya but more importantly the right attitude and what one really wants clarity in terms of what you really want that insight will automatically make you an objective person you will know the true worth of all the worldly achievements and pursuits if you know their worth and if you are not really interested in that uh, then it, it doesn't really matter correct it's a question of there's a cognitive change and the way we look at things whatever we want to achieve in this world the whole thing undergoes a complete change it will transform you also the way you look at all the things what i really want is moksha alone so if you have that clarity then everything else will fall around that all the other things you do also is only for that one has to you may lead any lifestyle but as a mumukshu that lifestyle has to again be a something which is geared towards attaining moksha or making yourself prepared to receive this knowledge that is the important thing so this vedanta shastra has to become the main thing for you vedanta is the only sadhana for the sadhya which you really want of course to even undergo vedanta shravana if you still require your to prepare yourself in any which way those things also can go on again it need not be a sequential process or anything nobody can come to vedanta being fully qualified adhikari that is there only in the upanishad textbooks are rarely it is there some people are there as soon as they are born maybe they just <laughs> some papa or something they have to they have to take care some karma and then they become a jnani when they get exposed to the smallest or easiest teaching so vedanta can be explained in even half a verse correct so there is a famous verse on brahma satyam jagan nitya jeevo brahmaiva na paraha that that's all it is half a verse or you can read hundreds of texts also to understand this so for the one who is already prepared maybe in all the lifetimes before also this is very easy but for all others we have to lead a certain life in which vedanta and the vedanta shravana manana vidyasana is the primary primary means everything else is only to help us do this properly and moksha alone is the only purushartha all the other sadhana sadhya i am not interested i may be still doing certain things as part of the lifestyle which i have chosen because i have certain duties and again even even fulfilling those duties will help me to overcome ragadvesha and help me gain the right attitude and make me prepared so that is the correct way to approach so here anya vacho vimunchata why because amritasya yesha setu setu hu so this is the bridge to amrita <laughs> amritasya setu hu this is the bridge of moksha 
so this is the bridge you have to take don't take some other detour and then you will end up in the samsara sagara correct so this is the setu like bhagavan rama built a setu and went to lanka like that the vedanta shastra and the shravana manana vidhyasana is the bridge which is going to take you to the amrita immortality if we have to translate it simply so immortality means what i am beyond space and time my reality myself i am not subjected to space time understanding that is good enough that is the amrita everything in space time has to die if you go along with space time okay so like that here we have to understand this is a mahavakya here actually because here like tatvamasi here also it says correct in this particular verse it talks about tameva ekam janata atmanam yasmin dyau prithivi cha antariksham otam so that brahman which was talked about as aksharam know that as your atma so clearly it is a this is a very important verse and it is also a mahavakya because it is talking about the identity so again even this anya anya vachaha when we take anya vachaha so even in this upanishad we talked about para and apara vidya correct so all the apara vidya is anya vacha understand that so anya vacha is nothing but all the apara vidya and apara vidya was listed including the learning the vedic chanting and all is all part of apara vidya only only understanding a mind which is characterized by mukshutvam and which has a certain nitya nitya vastu viveka and which has the samadhi satya sampatti that kind of a mind undergoing this ravana manana nididhyasana as pramana vyapara that alone is para vidya so that yaya tad aksharam adhigamyate that by that only this aksharam brahma is known as oneself all other things are really one has to give up all the apara vidya whatever is i can gain by this apara vidya i have to i have to give it up so parityajata vimunchata means parityajata give up so me basically in apara vidya everything is a karma phala only is talked about correct different types of karma you have to do to gain something but all that is not what i really want and here again janatha is plural may you all know this understand this so upanishad this although here it is being taught to saunaka but the guru says may you all know this uyam janatha is a plural okay so it is addressed to all the mukshu and only by doing this vedanta shravana manana vidyasana you can cross the ocean of samsara this life of becoming and you can be as you are your swarupa is ananta satyam jnana ananta and just be established in that so that is the main thing here now we will see the next verse also quickly araiva ratha nabhau text time from your mute to come out 
स्वस्ति वाराय अंतरते बहुधा जायम बहुधा जायम दट विच इज बी बॉर्न इन वेरियस फॉर्म In fact, in Purusha Sutta, it comes Ajaya Mano Bahuda Vijaya Te. That which is really unborn, but it is still born in various forms. So Bahuda Jaya Mana Ha Saha Yesha Ha. Okay, Saha Yesha Ha means here what? This self, Charate Anta Ha. so this self this this particular self this brahman it it is available in your mind correct so it is available in your mind as the very awareness and it is available there to be known but not as an object so antas charate means here whatever has become all these things this varied world that atma is available in the mind yatra nadya samhataha so all the nadis are like clustered okay like the spokes in a wheel correct spokes in a wheel go towards the hub correct so hub and spoke model is talked about here so all the nadis are like the spokes and they are all they are all centered on the hub okay like in a wheel so here all the nadis are centered on the mind okay and there this self is available self is available and then so what does it say ध्यायत आत्मानं ध्यायत सो मेडिटेट अपॉन दिस सेल्फ इन दिस मैनर ओम इति विद द हेल्प ऑफ ओम बाय चैंटिंग ओम लेट दिस मेडिटेट अपॉन दिस सेल्फ व्हिच इज अवेलेबल इन द माइंड वेयर ऑल द नॉडीज आर क्लस्टर्ड लाइक स्पोक्स ऑन द हब ऑफ अ व्हील so this is another the same thing the meditation is for the pointed out where do we do the meditation so here the shruti is pointing out okay there is a physical place for the mind okay where the atma is available and also uh, the spiritual heart and all some people talk about correct they are all using th- this these verses are all part of that so heart as the place where the mind is available and where the atma also is available in this mind and where all the nadis here nadis we can take either as nerves or blood vessels sometimes translating these indian words into english is a problem what really we mean by nadi whether it is a blood vessel or whether it is a nerve whatever it is see the nadis we have this concept of nadis in our shastra and all the nadis are there they are they are coming out from the heart and that in that heart alone this mind also is available and in the mind this self is available like that you meditate using om 
so that is what this particular verse is talking about so this heart is a physical place where the subtle body is supposed to be available because it is where all the physical activity for the physical activity to be there the heart has to function correct so if the heart fails to function the subtle body will leave the physical body and again whether it is the heart or the brain one question also may come our shastra is clear about heart brain also requires heart to function correct if heart does not pump the blood brain also will be you can be brain dead but you cannot be heart dead so i think our shastra is saying heart is the place where the the subtle body to be available this heart has to be functioning and that is where all the nadis are also connected and that is where you again you can imagine okay it is as an imaginary place where this atma also is available so that is what is talked about here and sometimes this word hridaya pundarika also is used okay pundarika means lotus so this or the shastra or also some people talk about thousand petal the lotus it is all an expression to refer to your mind and buddhi only okay atma is available in your buddhi in the form of awareness and that has to be understood and that atma only is is there as all this bahuda jayamana as all the different things so everything is woven into this atma oram as we saw before and in that only this ahankara also is born so this ahankara is nothing but the i i sense also as an individual the i sense also is born because of the awareness the self consciousness which is which is manifest in the mind correct but that self consciousness itself is nothing but an appearance because of the brahman which is the real chetanam consciousness so again when it is manifest in your mind it takes many forms correct that also we can say bahuda jayamana charate means when this brahman is manifest in your mind it manifests as ahankara it manifests as other emotions correct okay joy pain anger jealousy so it only manifests as all these things in your mind also and then you do variety of things correct once this consciousness awareness is there then we are able to use all the sense organs we are able to think we are able to do many things so all these things are only because of this brahma chetanam and your mind is nothing but a upadi here it looks like as though as though your self is changing correct your self is doing this doing that thinking so we attach i to all these things and looks like as though the self itself is doing all these things but in reality it is like the space correct when the pot is born pot space is born as though when the pot is destroyed pot space is as though destroyed but in reality there was only one space correct like that this brahman only appears through your mind it appears as though you are an individual with an ahankara with different emotions and it is doing vyavahara but in reality once you understand your real nature whatever is there is only this brahman tam atmanam janata so you may you know this atma using the om om is the abhidhana 
and Brahman is the Abhideya. So Om is the is the word and what is to be understood is Brahman as Lakshya, not as Vakya. Understand that. Again, that is important. So as the Lakshya Artha of Om, one has to understand this Brahman. So, again even many different people look at all these things in different ways also. So those who practice music as a sadhana, they say Nada Brahma and from there all these uh, different notes have come. Some people talk about vibrations, whatever it is. Everything is this Brahman alone. They are all manifestations of the same Brahman. And using this Om Upasana, this Om Meditation, Om Dhyana, you understand the Lakshya of this Om, which is nothing but Brahman. Okay? So, that is what is talked about here. Om Ityevam Dhyayata. So again, iti word also is there here, which is important. That it tells that we have to look upon Om as Brahman. Om iti evam dhyayata. In this manner you do dhyana. So when we say Brahman is Satyam Jnana Manantam, there there is no iti. Okay, because it is a revealing sentence there. But here it is, Dhyayata is there, so you have to say, you look upon Om as Brahman. Okay. So, here meditation is prescribed and again that Om meditation we can do, we can look upon Akara, Ukara, Makara as different manifestations of Om. And all that you can do, you can do different types of meditation. But finally, what has to be understood is through this Omkara, we have to understand Brahman. So that is what is being talked about here. And by doing that, what will happen? Tamas of Parastat. So you are going to cross this tamas, ignorance. And that alone is swasti astu also. Vaha swasti astu. Let there be auspicious end for all of you. The Guru is saying. So you do this Om meditation. You understand the Swarupa of Brahman. You have crossed ignorance. And let there be an auspicious end. Okay. There is no more auspiciousness other than understanding this and gaining this knowledge and that is what is being this Guru is wishing for all of us. Upanishad is wishing. So crossing the ignorance is the important thing here and again above what is this, what do we gain by crossing the ignorance? That will be talked about in the next verse. We will see that later in, later in this same Mundaka. We will see that uh, next week. Okay. Om Purnamada Purnamidam. Om Purnamada Purnamidam. Purnat Purnamudachyate. Purnat Purnamudachyate. Purnasya Purnamadaya. Purnasya Purnamadaya. Purnameva Vashishyate Purnameva Vashishyate Om Shanti 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 Om Shanti 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 No, no, that's a wrong Shanti you are chanting. This is Shukla Yajurveda Shanti is different. Okay. Om Shanti 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 Om Shanti 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 Hari Om Shri Guru Dhyo Namaha 
हरि ओम श्री गुरुभ्यो नम हरि ओम हरि ओम